listening to a special KFGO presentation of the Kepler Valentine's Day Blizzard radio play by Kevin Kennedy from a story by Kevin Kennedy and J.J. Gordon. Welcome back to the small town of Kepler, North Dakota. Situated in the southeast corner of the state, Kepler is home to some interesting characters who have been shoveling snow instead of getting ready for Valentine's Day. A major blizzard has rolled into town and already covered the prairie with a foot and a half of snow. Our first stop in Kepler is at the home of Gil and Helen Schneider. That's the third time I've blown the snow off the driveway and it shows no signs of letting up. Gilbert Schneider, stay on the welcome mat. It's on your head and shoulders and you're getting it all over the floor. Quit brushing it off. It's flying everywhere. Well, what do you want me to do with it, Helen? Leave it outside. Ah. The radio says we've gotten 15 inches and we're going to get at least 10 more. It's already up past my knee and over the top of the snowblower. Does your snowmobile have gas? I don't know. Why? You're going to need it. I'm not going for a ride. Gil, you know as well as I do that there are bound to be people stranded in Kepler. It's been snowing for eight hours. I don't think anyone is stranded. Every time it snows in Kepler, someone gets stranded. How is this my problem? Someone could die of hypothermia. I don't want to die of hypothermia. You're not going to die of hypothermia. You're the only grown man in Kepler that owns a snowsuit. Lots of guys own a snowsuit. You're the only one who wears it. I only wear it when I have to spend more than an hour outside. I wouldn't have to be outside that long if I could park my car in the garage. Let me get rid of your books from the garage so I can park in there again. Absolutely not. Those are going to be collector's items someday. Who wants to buy a history book about Kepler that's wrong? Haven't you heard of mythology? Mythology? I don't remember Zeus making an appearance in Kepler. Those books tell the history of Kepler as most people believe it to be. You mark my words. Within five years, those books will be worth five times what I paid for them. I'm not going to last five years if we keep getting snow like this. I've been calling around, and there are quite a few people that aren't answering their phone. That's because they can see it's you calling. I want you to make a sweep around Kepler and make sure no one is stranded. And what do you want me to do if I find someone? Tell them to call you? I want you to help them. Oh, Helen. I made sandwiches and I filled two thermoses with hot coffee. They'd be better off if I brought them a shot of whiskey. Oh, that reminds me. Make sure you swing by the municipal liquor store. I know they are still open and there are probably some fools there trying to stock up for a few days. How do you know they're still open? I called and they answered. They must not have caller ID. I'm sure no one has plowed their parking lot and someone must be stuck. This is a bad idea. Oh, and make sure you swing out by Lake Killebrew. Most of the ice houses are still up. You want me to go knock on the door of every ice house on Lake Killebrew? There must be 50 of them. Well, see if there's a car parked next to any of them. That will tell you if someone's inside. Maybe they don't want to be bothered. Men don't like to be bothered when they're ice fishing. I have never understood why someone would want to leave a perfectly warm house to go sit out on a frozen lake. Well, it just sounds like a recipe for disaster. I wish I was out on a frozen lake right now. What was that? Um, I said I just wondered if the fish were biting right now. You know, I don't know how the fish do it. You'd think they would freeze to death. This is going to take all day. Then you'd better get going. What if I get stuck? You have a snowmobile. It's old. I don't know if it can handle it. You took Jack for a ride on it last week. It was sounding funny. You've been fiddling out in the garage with it all winter. It's an old Polaris. You told me after you came back with Jack that it will run for another 30 years. (sighs) Me and my big mouth. Why are you taking your snowsuit off? I thought I'd warm up first. Why? You're just going to get cold again. Now, is your cell phone fully charged? I don't know. I don't have anyone to come out and get you if you get stuck. Yeah, what if I get stuck? The only time you ever got stuck with that snowmobile was the time you ran up a tree trunk out at the edge of town. It was a fence post. Daryl had to call a tow truck with a flatbed to put it on. I should have abandoned it then. It cost more to fix it then than you paid for it in the first place. It did not. Riding up a fence post. <laughs> you know, that sounds like something Tanner would do. Tanner doesn't own a Polaris. He owns an Arctic cat. Oh, if nothing else, you'll have to save Tanner. He's probably hanging upside down somewhere. Would you please get me my face mask and my helmet? I put them right over there next to the door. I knew you would need them. I'll need my snowmobile gloves. Under your helmet. 
It'll be dark soon. It doesn't get dark until 6. That gives you enough time to make a couple loops around Kepler. Now, here are two thermoses and a bag of sandwiches. What are people going to drink out of? They can just drink it straight out of the thermos. You're not supposed to drink out of the same cup during flu season. I don't think they'll mind if they're freezing to death. Oh, you've thought of everything, haven't you? I have been married to you long enough, Gilbert Schneider, to know when you're stalling. Now, get out there and save somebody! Here I go. Close the door. You're letting the snow inside. As Gil heads out onto the frozen streets of Kepler in his trusty snowmobile, we can see only a few cars and parking lots around town. In the distance, you can see a light on at the Bjornsson Middle School. It must be Mrs. Fisher decorating her room for Valentine's Day. Day another destiny, this never-ending road to Calvary. These men who seem to know my crime will surely come a second time one day more. I did not live until today. How can I live when we are parted? One day... Oh, I... (laughs) I didn't know anyone else was in the building. I just stopped by to get something in case we're closed tomorrow. Oh, we won't close tomorrow. We never close in Kepler. You're here on a Sunday, I see. Oh, I was just decorating my room for Valentine's Day (laughs) and singing. (laughs) You've really outdone yourself, Carol. Valentine's Day is my favorite holiday, Miss Skinner. There aren't any children around. Call me Valerie. Valerie. Valentine's Day isn't a real holiday. I know that, but the kids like it. Oh, I had a crush in the fourth grade, so I want them to feel comfortable with those feelings. Fourth grade. Let's see. I had a crush on Billy Morgan. No, no. That was sixth grade. Fourth grade was Marcus. What was his last name? He moved to Roscoe and lived there for only one year. Roscoe? Roscoe, South Dakota. I went to a K-12 school, so I probably had a crush on a sixth grader anyway. (laughs) Oh, Don't worry. I don't tell most people that I'm from South Dakota. You were singing Les Mis. Oh, yes. I saw that show on Broadway twice. It's such a good show. I would love to have been in that show. Oh, are you an aspiring actress? Well, we didn't have much of a theater group at my school. Oh, it doesn't need to be big to have an impact. (laughs) True. I think we should have a community theater here in Kepler. That would be nice. Just think of the shows we could do. Are you planning on being here much longer? It's snowing really heavily outside. I really want to put all these valentines that the children made up on the windows. When did you go to Broadway? After I graduated from college. I took a year off and traveled. I'm jealous. It was great. I hitchhiked through Europe, went to the Great Wall of China, saw the pyramids in Egypt. Wow, quite a trip. Yeah, I came home when my money ran out. I didn't want to teach in Roscoe. Too small. Kepler's not too big. No, but they were the only one that offered me the job as a principal. I didn't want to be a kindergarten teacher for my whole life, so I took the first principal job I could. Luckily, I didn't have to start out as an assistant principal, although it's been tougher than I thought. Most of the teachers here don't really want to embrace change. That's what I've found out. In fact, they actively sabotage change. Have you thought about a different approach? Like what? You could start by eating in the teacher's lounge with us. Ooh, I thought that was teacher's safe space. Well, we do talk about you quite a bit in there. I suppose so. It's not mean. Well, most of it. What do people say? Don't worry. You don't have to use dent names. Well, they think you're stuck up. Me? I've been called lots of things, but never stuck up. I've been called self-righteous before, but not stuck up. They call you that, too. Oh. And they call you clueless. Ouch. And airheaded. Airheaded? That, that wasn't me. Is it my blonde hair? Maybe. I think some of the other teachers are jealous of your blonde hair. I haven't really made any friends in town since I've been here. Takes time. Kepler is a friendly place, but most of the time, people have been here forever, so they're a bit leery of outsiders. The dating pool isn't very large here either. No, most of the women in town get married by the time they are 22. 25 makes you an old maid. And for a woman who is... I'm 30. There you have it. You've aged out. That's not very reassuring. I'm not trying to be mean. That's okay. I would have the same problem back in Roscoe. You probably won't stay here anyway. I was hoping to stay here for a few years, get some experience, but I've had my doubts this year, to be honest. It's been tough making friends among the staff. You must have made friends with someone. What about Twyla? She's your secretary. She must like you. 
I don't think she likes me. Yeah, don't worry. She doesn't like anybody. That's what I gathered. Most of the people go up to Wapita to find dates. I tried that. I didn't have much luck. Mm, you could always go up to Fargo. Some people make that trip regularly. I'm not getting any younger. I'll probably have to do that. I should get going soon. I'm getting hungry. I was on my way to the cafeteria when I heard you singing. I was going to see what I could find. Probably only cheese sticks and skim milk. That's more than I have in my apartment. Want to come? <laughs> sure. The snow is really coming down. Hey, where'd you park? Um, in your spot? Closest to the door? Where did you park? Um, right next to you. Sorry about that. No one usually comes in on a Sunday. That's okay. It's a little ridiculous that those two spots are so much closer to the building. The teachers complain about that also. I don't blame you. I would complain too. Here we go. Let's see what treasures we can find. The shelves are all empty. Let's go in the back. Never been back here. I've only come back here when I'm alone on the weekends. Let's see. Here's a box of strawberry Pop-Tarts. One package left. It's got two Pop-Tarts in a package we'll share. I like strawberry Pop-Tarts. One of the great breakfast foods. Let's see what's in that walk-in refrigerator. A huge jar of mayonnaise. I'll pass. We could get a couple spoons and eat it right out of the container. Ugh! I'm teasing. Oh, what's in this little box here? Probably just cheese slices. I'm not above eating cheese slices. Jackpot! What is it? Uncrustables. I love Uncrustables! Me too! How many do you want? Two. Two for you and two for me. Looks like there's some cartons of 1% milk. I'll take one. Here you go. It's cold in here. Yeah, let's go eat in the lunchroom. I haven't eaten lunchroom food since my first year of teaching. I eat it all the time because I don't cook much at home. I'll probably be a terrible wife. Cooking is a very learnable skill. I actually hate the kitchen. Whoever I marry is going to have to like to cook. Otherwise, we're going to be eating out a lot. I used to make my mom cut the crust off of my sandwiches. Me too. I love peanut butter and jelly. My mom only used Smucker's jelly. Concord grape? Yes. I used to wonder what a Concord grape was. <laughs> I thought they were from some place named Concord. Probably. <laughs> I told you I had a crush on a boy in the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I was opening a carton of milk just like this, but it got stuck. And when I tried to pull the mouth of it open... <laughs> that used to happen to me all the time. I was sitting right at the table next to this boy I had a crush on. Our teacher made us sit alphabetically at lunch. Here's your Pop-Tart. Thank you. I was struggling with this carton. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore, so I jammed my pencil down there to make a hole so I could get my finger in. Then I pulled back on it a little too aggressively, and the carton tore apart, and the milk went flying in the air, and he drenched Oh, this no. What, boy. Was, what was his name? I don't know. I blocked it from my memory. Oh. In seventh grade, I had a really bad cold, and my nose was stuffed up. I was sitting in the back of my math class and shoved a finger up there on the slide to try to clear out some of the dried boogers. Just then, <laughs> the boy I had a crush on turned around and saw me with my index finger knuckle deep in my nose. Oh, I was mortified. I would have died on the spot. He and his friends called me booger for years. <laughs> Is this the real reason you left Roscoe? <laughs> <laughs> he still lives there. He married my best friend. I bet he still calls you booger. I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to I'm going to give my parking spot to the teacher of the month. That way they can park near the door for the month. We'll share that spot around and I'll park out in the lot with everybody else. Who is the teacher of the month? I don't know, whoever I want it to be. You. You'll be the first teacher of the month. You can park there tomorrow. Thank you. I'm serious. I'm going to announce it over the intercom tomorrow. Park there when you come in tomorrow. Okay. What? Do I have jelly on my face? No. I'm I'm sorry I prejudged you. Isn't everyone suspicious of the principal, especially a new one? I suppose. That isn't fair to you, though. I didn't help matters much. No. You were new to town. We should have reached out. Come to the teacher's lounge tomorrow and eat with us. Are you sure? I don't want to impose on your lunch dynamic. Dynamic? <laughs> Uh, Cindy spends most of the time complaining about her fiancé, and we give her marriage advice. I didn't realize she was engaged. Yes, she met her fiancé in the dating mecca of Wapita. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I will come to lunch tomorrow. That's if we have school. It's really coming down. Our cars must be covered. Yeah, let's go check. Your car had a nice covering of snow on it when I got here an hour ago. It's probably completely covered by now. Oh, there it is. Yep. 
both of our cars are covered. Man, that's a lot of snow. I don't know. I don't think we're going to get out of here. Oh, dear. I'm going to have to walk. No, no, no. I'll call my husband. He has four-wheel drive. We'll drop you off. Oh, thank you. Who's that? What? On the snowmobile circling our cars. Oh, hey, that's Gil Schneider. He keeps looking at the building. Oh, he knows someone is inside. His wife, Helen, makes him go out on rescue missions when it's snowing. Get your coat. I'll wave him down. But what if... Don't worry. He'll give you a ride. Welcome back to the KFGO presentation of the Kepler Valentine's Day Blizzard, a radio play by Kevin Kennedy. Gil Schneider is checking every farmhouse, doghouse, and outhouse to make sure no one is stranded during the biggest blizzard Kepler, North Dakota has seen in decades. Most stores are closed, including Gordo's Hardware on Main Street. Gordo and his wife Patty are safe and sound inside their home, but cabin fever is already setting in. Not that boat puzzle, Gordo. Why not? Well, there's too much blue in it. Look at the sky. It'll take forever. Patty, we haven't done this one yet. Grab the one with the movies of the 1980s. Oh, we have done that one a hundred times. Well, I like that one. Uh, Look, it's not even taken apart. Well, take it apart then. No. That defeats the purpose. It's like digging a hole and filling it up again. Puzzles are meant to be done only one at a time and then passed on to someone else. Where did you come up with that rule? Everyone knows that rule. Well, I don't know that rule. Uh, well, now you do. Well, that's a dumb rule. Uh, well, maybe it's dumb, but it is a rule. I guess we're going to have to go with the boat puzzle. Well, I get to do the edges of the puzzle. Uh, no, Patty. <laughs> I always do the edges. Well, now you can do the blue sky. The infinite blue sky. Uh, You don't do the hardest part until the end. Where do you come up with all these rules? My family did puzzles all the time when I was growing up. Does that make you a puzzle expert or something? Uh, I prefer puzzle aficionado. (laughs) You should listen to yourself. Uh, uh, What are you doing? I'm trying to see if these two pieces fit. You're supposed to turn all the pieces over first. Let me guess. This is another one of those the gordo puzzle aficionado puzzle making rules. (laughs) Turning over pieces is grunt work, and that's why everyone needs to pitch in and get them all turned upside right. Oh, hey. These two pieces fit together. All of the pieces turned over. I wonder if the puzzle gods will smite me. Ah, stop it. Well, you're just jealous because I have put together more pieces than you. (laughs) What if I close my eyes and just reach in blindly, pick out two pieces, and see if they fit together? (laughs) I think it'll take about two years for you to finish the puzzle. (laughs) So, where do we have to go? We have about 300 inches of snow on the ground, and we're stuck here in the house for the next six months with each other. We might as well challenge ourselves on this puzzle. Well, then you do the blue sky and I'll do the edges. Hey, put those back. Uh, No, you do your random method. Put them back. I'm doing Uh, the uh, edges. uh, I've got part of the beach here. (laughs) Ow! That hurt. Why did you pinch me under the arm? Because you stole my pieces. Well, that hurt. Well, I warned you. This is puzzle harassment. I should call the police and report you. (laughs) Puzzle harassment? Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like a serious crime. Uh, It is. Punishable with up to 10 years in jail. I thought it sounded more like a death penalty case. Huh. It should be. Oh, remind me never to move to Puzzlelandia. (laughs) You wouldn't even been given citizenship in Puzzlelandia. The leader wouldn't give you permission to enter the country. Leader? I didn't realize Puzzlelandia was an autocracy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a good leader. A dictator. Oh, a benevolent dictator. All of his citizens follow his laws, <laughs> and he always gets to do the edges. Ugh, sounds awful. <laughs> you just wish you could live there. Look at this. I have got all of the beach edging done. Well, uh, I am still flipping over pieces. Uh, good luck with that. 
It's a good thing we didn't have to live together 150 years ago. Why is that? Uh, because back then, we would have been stuck together all the time. Are you saying you don't like to be around me? No. It's just, whenever we do a puzzle, we fight. We don't do puzzles that often. Well, often enough. Are you getting cabin fever? Uh, a little. Uh, why don't we stop doing the puzzle then? Well, what would we do? I don't know. Play hearts? Uh, you need at least three people to play hearts. Oh, I don't know, Gordo. We could pull out a recipe book and bake something. Uh, you know I hate to cook. Yes, I know. <laughs> when I was a kid, all I wanted were snow days, so I didn't have to go to school. I wanted to go sledding or build a snowman or have snowball fights. But now I've got a snow day and I am completely lost at what to do. Ooh, we could have a snowball fight. Uh, no, uh, I'd win. <laughs> Are you kidding? I would kill you. Uh, uh, no, a snowball is much different than a softball. I can throw one pretty hard. Mm. I don't want to go out in the snow. You're scared. Uh, uh, I am not scared. <laughs> I'm lazy. Hey, come and look at this. It looks like the North Pole. It looks like sand dunes. I, I should go out and blow some of the snow. Yeah, just look at it for a bit, would you? All right. All right. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Well, what is that? Uh, it's either a wolf or a snowmobile. Why would somebody be out? Uh, it's Gil Schneider. What on earth is Gil Schneider doing out in this? Uh, saving people. Saving who? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we have a few people in this town that need saving. <laughs> I know that, but... Uh, uh, oh, I, wait, uh, there's someone on the back. I don't think they're driving around for fun. That's, uh, um, that's the, uh... That's the new principal of the middle school! Not everyone in Kepler is staying inside during the blizzard. Pastor Donna attempted some last-minute errands after church and got her car stuck right in the middle of Main Street. Looks like she isn't going anywhere. But luckily, the open sign is still glowing at the municipal package store across the street. Maybe there's a friendly face inside who happens to have a friendly tow rope in their truck. Well, that's not going anywhere. Stuck? Father Al. Hello, Pastor Donna. Hello. Yes, my car is stuck and it's not going anywhere. Where's your car? I walked over here from the church. That's a bit of a hike. Six blocks. I needed some wine for communion tomorrow. I don't think anyone is going to show up for church tomorrow. Oh, I'm sure someone will show up. They always do. Won't you just cancel? The Catholic Church never cancels. Oh, well, I probably won't cancel either. I once did a mass for two people, Clara Donovan and Mabel Hogan. Neither of them has missed a mass in 40 years, and the threat of a tornado wasn't going to stop them. They came to church in a tornado? It never touched down. It looks like we're going to be stuck here for a while. Would you like a sip? You opened your communion wine? Have a spare bottle, I always say. Do you have a cup? I just drank right out of the bottle. Is it not hygienic enough for you? Well, I don't usually... It's not going to kill you. Give me that. I've had communion wine before. We have communion at the Lutheran Church. We have it every weekend. Oh, that's sweet. It's from some winery out of California. I like the sweet aftertaste. What happened to the tornado, ladies? Don't drink all of it. I just had a few sips. They always sat in the front row across the aisle from each other. Mabel on the right, Clara on the left. Never missed the 11 o'clock mass. I knew they would be there, so I came over from the rectory. I was in the basement because the sirens were going off. You could have been killed. Well, I was young then. I, I figured if God wanted me that day, he was going to take me. I think God would want you to be safe. Probably. Here, have another sip. Both of them were in their usual spots, sitting there with their arms folded defiantly. The wind outside was almost deafening. 
<laughs> you might get Lucky Winery? <laughs> That's a bit of a scandalous name. What if one of your parishioners saw this up on the altar? <laughs> I pour it in a carafe. No one sees it. Except maybe one of the altar boys back in the sacristy. Tommy saw the bottle and wanted the label. <laughs> I should think so. The winking cow on the label has some indecent connotations. Oops, I'm afraid there's only a few drops left. Finish it. I have three more bottles. Tommy doesn't have an indecent bone in his body. He's only ten. Tommy just thought the cow was funny. You have a corkscrew with you? I was a boy scout. My father gave me this Swiss Army knife as a present when I went off to camp the first time. I've carried it with me ever since. That's a dangerous weapon. It's a practical tool. The knife isn't really long enough to stab anything. I suppose I could uh, kill a squirrel if it got within a foot of me. When does this place close? About ten minutes. Well, what do we do when it closes? We walk, or maybe somebody saves us. I don't have a pair of boots on. Who would be out in this? <laughs> this, this is North Dakota. Believe me, there there are people out in this. Remember the tornado ladies? Oh, that's right. What happened to them? Here, you have the first sip. Thank you. I gave the shortest homily of my career. <laughs> I spoke about not being afraid of death. It lasted all of two minutes. When I got to the Lamb of God, one of the stained glass windows blew out. What? You must have stopped then. I couldn't stop right after I told them to face death like a happy soldier of God. <laughs> well, even God must be rational at a time like that. Save some for me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Here. We have the stations of the cross in the stained glass windows around the church. They were straight line winds of 80 miles per hour, and the second window blew out. Jesus carrying the cross? Precisely. It was a beautiful window. Next time you're in the church, look at the window. We had it replaced, but it was a different artist, so it doesn't really match the rest of the windows. I have never understood the Catholic obsession with stained glass. It helps bridge the gap between earthly and divine. It's ostentatious. Heavenly. Pompous. Well, I like them. Actually, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I think both Clara and Mabel took the window blowing out as a sign that Jesus was calling them home. The sound of the wind became unbearable, and they responded to the prayers like we were suddenly an evangelical church. <laughs> they were crying out and waving their hands to heaven. It was time for communion, and the wafers flew out of my hands. <laughs> I actually held onto one and broke it into three pieces for us. The wine? Oh, here. Thank you. I, I meant, did you give them wine? Absolutely. Each took a deep chug, thinking it was going to be the last drink of their lives. <laughs> and when we finished drinking the wine, the wind stopped, like God had flipped a switch. It really turned off that quick. Uh, I'm sorry, I just finished this bottle. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Were they disappointed that God didn't take them that day? I think they were. <laughs> we went outside to survey the damage, and there were tree branches down all over Kepler. Oh. The roof off of Tim Peterson's shed was lying in front of the church. Oh. The storm caused quite a bit of damage. Oh, and the window? Clara and Mabel helped me clean it up. Each of them wanted to keep a piece of the glass. They fought over the cross, but Clara settled for a piece that had Jesus' beard and a bit of his robe on it. They both insisted on paying to replace the window. I told them that I would split the cost between them, and I did. Six months later, we had a little ceremony when the window was installed. And a month after that... Mabel died. Oh, no. And Clara died the next day. I think she was jealous and didn't want Mabel to beat her into heaven. <laughs> well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Give me the bottle. They have a recycling bin here in the store. Oh, that wine has gone straight to my head. I feel a little tipsy. It's good, isn't it? I don't know how I'm going to get home when the store closes. I, I don't have the right shoes. You need to have faith. I have faith. I just don't want frostbite. I don't feel very steady on my legs. Y your prayers have been answered. Who is that? One of your parishioners, Gilbert Schneider, patron saint of Kepler. What is he doing out in this weather? I suspect Helen has something to do with it.
Welcome back to a special KFGO presentation of the Kepler Valentine's Day Blizzard, a radio play by Kevin Kennedy. Kepler resident Gil Schneider has been checking on residents all day via his snowmobile, and he's armed with sandwiches and two thermoses of coffee. The sun has set, and now there are only a few people out left in the town of Kepler. The light is still on at the bowling alley, though. Inside, there can only be a handful of people left. Just a reminder, the fast lane is closing in five minutes. We're closing early tonight because of the storm. Please leave your bowling shoes on the counter on your way out. Ha! No, that's what I'm talking about. Beat that. New record. What now? New record. I got the first and nine slots on Ms. Pac-Man. Who's that in tenth place? Tanner. Let me play just one more and I'll wipe them off the game. We don't have time for that. What are you talking about? We're closing up early because of the storm. <laughs> that don't mean we gotta leave. Your Dan owns the place. Have you seen the snow outside? It's going to take us half an hour just to clean off your car. Just let me play one more game. No, you take forever. Please. No, Blake. You'll have to just set the world record tomorrow. I swear to God, if Tanner comes in here before me and gets a good score. I don't think he plays Miss Pac-Man anymore. He plays Galaga. He's already taken over my high score. That's because he knows he can't beat me. I don't think he cares to challenge a high schooler. Just leave him on the counter. Thanks for coming. That's cold. I'm not going in that. Well, you can't stay here. Dude, what if we brought this game over to my house and put it in the basement? What? what? No! How, how would you even move it? It can't be that heavy. <clears throat> okay, maybe it's heavier than I thought, but the two of us could move it. What are you gonna do? Strap it to the top of your Honda? You're right! We need someone with a truck! Who do we know with a truck? Tanner. Tanner! Right! We can get him to help us move it! You're forgetting one thing. What? If he helps us bring it to your place, he's going to want to play it all the time. I won't let him. Then he won't help you move it. Right. Who else do we know with a truck? We're not moving the Miss Pac-Man game to your basement. Why not? Because we're not. Besides, what do I tell my dad when it's gone? Tell him someone stole it. Who? I don't know. Someone with a truck? You're forgetting that my dad just had surveillance cameras installed in here. And one of them is pointing straight at the video games. What? Where? Right there! See it? Wave. Wait for the cameras. Why would your dad sell video cameras? Who's gonna rob him in Kepler? You are, apparently. It's like, dude, we live in a police state. N no, we don't! <laughs> My mom only lets me use the computer in the living room so she can keep an eye on me. And she checks my browser history. You clear it out, don't you? Of course, but I don't want my mom looking when I'm checking out. I thought your dad is on the computer most of the time. He is, but she isn't checking out his search history. Plus, anything you shouldn't look at, you're looking at on your phone anyways. I know this, Heath, but it's the principle of the thing. My mom is like the cops. I live in a police state. Come on, let's go. You sure I can't play one more game? No, go warm up your car. I don't have a hat or gloves. We've got 15 inches of snow on the ground and you didn't wear a hat? I didn't know where it was when I left. I swear I'm stunned you've made it to senior year. Come on, you start the car and I'll brush off the snow. I don't have a brush. Go start the car. I'll get a broom from the back and bring it out. Sounds like a plan. It's amazing that he hasn't died yet. He's lucky that Tanner lives in Kepler. Otherwise, he'd be the dumbest kid in town. What is he doing out there? Get in the car and try it. Is he wearing bowling shoes? Why is he wearing bowling shoes? I'm going to beat him up with a broom when I find it. It's going to take an hour to clean all that snow off his car. He's proud of his score on Miss Pac-Man. He's the only one that plays it. He's only having a competition with himself. Dude, I haven't found the broom yet. It won't start. Did you flood it? We'll try again after we get the snow off. No, I'm telling you, it won't start. What sound did it make when you turned the key? Uh, it kind of went, err, then it went, wah, then nothing. It went what? It went, err, then wah. I know what you just said. What kind of sound is that? It's the sound the car makes when it's dying. You're not going to win any award for sound effects. Dude, I'm telling you, that's the sound it made. Are Connie and Jeff still out there? Who? Connie and Jeff. They were just in here bowling. They were warming up their car. Go ask them for a jump. You're making me do everything. I'll find a broom while you get them to jump you. 
They're pulling away. Run out there and stop them. I'm not going to be stuck with him all night in the bowling alley. They got away. Did, did you run into the street and wave your arms? No, I don't want to get hit by a car. Who is driving down the street in the storm? Well, it's too late. They're gone now. What do we do now? Why are you wearing bowling shoes? They're more comfortable than my shoes. You didn't bowl tonight. They're from the other day. Wait, you've been wearing those bowling shoes from a few days ago? Yeah, I never turned them back in. You still have my shoes behind the counter. Did you wear them to school? Yeah. I don't think I'll ever understand you. Now that we're stuck, can I play Ms. Pac-Man? No, I'm going to call my dad. Can I play till he gets here? No! What if I play Gallic instead? I'm not as good at that game. Hey, Dad? Yeah, I closed up. Can you come get us? Blake is here. Yeah, he was trying to lift the Miss Pac-Man game earlier. Oh, you were watching on the security cameras? No, he was, he was just messing around. Yeah, I realized that. Yes, I agree. He is pretty dumb. No, he's not related to Tanner. We're stuck. No, his car died. Can you come get us? All right. All right, we'll call him. Bye. My dad's how you were trying to lift the Miss Pac-Man game earlier. Is he angry? He thinks you're stupid. Oh. He wants you to call your dad to come get us. My dad is asleep by now. It's only 8 o'clock. He goes to bed early? What? Why? Dude, we should walk. It's five miles to your house and you're wearing bowling shoes. It's not that far. You don't have a hat or gloves? You'll freeze to death. Look out that door. We have almost two feet of snow. What are we going to do? I'll call my dad back. What's that light? Where? Down the street. It's someone on a snowmobile. Can you jump a car from a snowmobile? I, I don't know. It's Gil Schneider. He can give us a ride home. The boys asked about jumping the car with a snowmobile, but Gil said that would be a bad idea. And it certainly would be. Now let's check on the area just outside of Kepler. On Lake Killebrew, it looks like some people are still out ice fishing. I told you we didn't need to buy one of those fancy trailers, Morgan. We got the fanciest fish house on Lake Killebrew, and it didn't cost us a penny. I say we make little improvements on it every year. With my connections at the fishing store, people will want to buy one of our fish houses and we'll get rich. You don't think your your boss will be angry once he's no longer able to sell those ice tents, do you? Yeah, we only sold three of them this year. Oh, uh, check, check the heater. I think it went out. Oh, this is a fancy heater. Where did you get this? Uh, we use it on the construction site. It's top of the line. It cranks out the heat? Let's see here. Ah, sound of propane. I have more in my car. I'll get it. Hey, hey! Close the door quickly! I don't want to lose the heat we have! Right! It, you didn't close it tight! <clears throat> we, we've got a problem. What? The propane tanks are at my house. You forgot them? They're sitting by the front door. We still have enough heat to keep us warm for a while. You let most of it out when you went outside. I'll drive to my house quickly and get the tanks. Right, make it fast. <laughs> Come on, Stuart. Give it a little gas. Uh, okay, now you've probably flooded it. It won't start. You flooded it. We need a jump. Who's going to give us a jump? We're in the middle of the lake. There's lots of snow out there. I don't think anyone could make it out here. I guess we'll walk. Walk where? To shore. And then what? Ask someone for a ride. Who's, who's going to be out in this? All right, why don't we go over to the ne- another ice house and see if they have some propane? I didn't see any lights on any of the other ice houses around us. No, no one is out tonight but us. Then we'll walk to an ice house and see if it has propane. Then we'll replace it later. That's stealing. We'll leave a note. It's still stealing. This is a dire situation. We could freeze to death. It's still technically stealing. I don't think anyone is going to send us to jail for trying not to freeze to death. <sighs> what if they don't have propane? Then we'll go to another ice house until we find some. It's getting really cold in here. All right. Who's going to go? You. It's your idea. You forgot the propane. I could see my breath. I'm cold. Well, so am I. The sooner you get going, the sooner we can get warm. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 it's frozen shut. Just push harder. It'll crack the ice. You want to budge? Let me try. Uh, it's 
frozen solid. I think we had the heat up so high that it melted the snow around the door. Now it is re- now it's refrozen, and the door is stuck. I know that, Stuart. What are we gonna do? <laughs> I don't want to freeze to death. It's not that cold. I don't want to die. Calm down. Let me call someone on my phone. Right, where's my phone? I- Give me your phone. I left it in the car. Why would you leave it in the car? I thought we were going to be leaving soon. You should never put your phone down. Where's your phone? The battery was low. I left it charging at home. We're going to die. Calm down. We're not going to die. I can't feel my toes. Stomp your feet. I can't feel my fingers. Uh, Rub them together. I'm getting frostbite. It takes half an hour to get frostbite. I'm going to be limbless. Let's move this. What? Let's lift the house and we can crawl out. Good idea. Uh, you go on that side, I'll grab onto this side, and let's lift it and we'll flip it. Okay, okay. Good idea. Okay. <clears throat> on the count of three. One, two, three! <laughs> All right, this isn't going to work. There's too much snow on the roof. You overbuilt it. It's, it's too heavy. I wish we had one of those tents. They would have caved in from the weight of the snow. Oh, we're going to die. Oh, calm down. We're not going to die. They'll, f- they'll find us out here tomorrow, dead underneath the snow. Wait, I have an idea. What? Let's move the ice house. Which direction is the shore? Uh, s- straight out the door. Why? Good. Car's not in the way. We're going to lift and walk this ice house until we get to the shore. Then we'll yell until someone hears us. It's, it's awfully heavy. We don't have to lift it much, just enough to get off the ground and start moving. I don't know. Do you have a better idea? No. Then get on that side and lift on the count of three, okay? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> start walking. It's heavy. You're moving. You're moving. Get going. What the fuck? Step in a fishing hole. I'm sure they're all frozen over now. My arms are tired. Put it down. No. <sighs> it's going to take us a year to move it to the shore. Oh, calm down. We just need to move it a little at a time. I don't want to freeze to death. Shh, shh, shh. Do you hear that? I only hear the wind. Quiet. What is it? Snowmobile. Oh, we're saved. <laughs> we're saved. <laughs> The wind has picked up, and only those with four-wheel drive and some good tires can make it through the snow. But even in bad weather, the reliable highway patrol are still making sure everyone is safe. A little ways outside of Kepler, on I-29, sits a squad car. Let's listen in as two troopers make conversation on the roadside. So when, uh, when, when do you think they'll give you my own car, huh? Soon. They want me to teach you the ropes, and then they'll send you out alone. So, do you think we'll give any speeding tickets tonight? <laughs> or... <laughs> we'll be lucky if we see anyone tonight. We'll, we'll probably get a call for someone stuck in a ditch. Oh. Can't see anything. Me neither. You nervous? A <laughs> uh, little bit. Ah, don't be. Nights like this where there's a storm, there's nobody out on the roads. Well, what if we get stuck? I've never been stuck on this job. Well, how far is the South Dakota border? You ask a lot of questions. Ten miles. Ten miles. You're not from around here, are you? Nope. From the western side of the state. Why not? Mohal. Mo- what? Mohal. That's a small town. Never heard of it. Yeah, most people haven't. Plan on going back there? (laughs) Did everything I could to get out. Well, we're just a few miles from the town of Kepler. You go directly west to here, you run into it. Uh, never heard of it. Most people haven't. Well, what do they do there? Not much. Yeah, same as Mohal. We didn't have much to do. Does your family still live there? Yeah, mom, dad, sister, her husband, one set of grandparents. <laughs> I bet that's half the population of Mole Hill. Yeah, pretty much. It's Mohal. But I never understood living in a small town. Not much to do in those places. Well, uh, my sister sells insurance for my dad, and my brother-in-law fixes tractors. Look at that idiot coming our way. He's going too fast. You watch. We're going to get a call of the car stuck in the ditch. Ten minutes. We'll have to go fish him out. Should we pull him over and tell him to slow down, or... Do you want to go out right now and write a ticket in the driving snow? Not really. You'll learn soon to pick your battles. 
We pull over everyone that's speeding. We never get a break. So you don't pull over all the speeders? Gordon, let me give you a piece of advice, okay? You only pull over people that are going at least 10 miles over the speed limit. Hey, get out and clack the ice on the windshield wipers. There was a big chunk of ice stuck in your wiper. Saw that. <laughs> it's cold out there. Five degrees. But what if that car goes into the ditch in South Dakota? It's not our problem. But what if we're closer than the South Dakota it's Highway Patrol? It's not our problem. But what if... It's not our if, problem! We have enough problems without having to worry about what's going on over in South Dakota. There's a report of a car stuck in the ditch in I-29 about a mile from the South Dakota border. Stanley, are you down that way? Told you. Yeah, we're here. We just saw them pass by a few minutes ago. Are they okay? Yeah, they just slid off into the ditch and are stuck. Oh, we'll take care of it. Roger that. Well, let's do this. Uh, yeah, I think we're stuck. Let's move it slightly back and go forward again. Well, the, the wheels are spinning. They're all seen radial tires. They'll catch. Well, they're still spinning. Give it some gas. Nothing. They're, they're starting to catch. Give it some gas. They're start, they're, don't let up. They're starting to catch. Go. Let, we're, don't we're let up. Slipping. Turn we're slipping. the wheel. We're slipping. Don't let off the gas. We're in the ditch. I can see that. You want me to call dispatch? I'll do it. Dispatch. Go ahead, Stanley. We spun out. Now we're stuck in the ditch. We need to have someone to come pull us out. Ooh, all of our trucks are out on other calls. How long do you think that'll be? At least an hour, maybe longer. How much gas do we have? Uh, eighth of a tank. We've only got an eighth of a tank of gas. We're gonna run out of gas. Turn it off for 10 minutes, then turn it on for 10 minutes. Are we gonna freeze to death? We're not gonna freeze to death. How far is it into that town? Two miles. Two miles. All right, I'll walk into town and get us some help. You're not gonna walk into Kepler. I've got a good pair of boots You're on. You're not gonna walk into Kepler. Well, I don't wanna freeze to death only a few miles from being safe. We're not going to freeze to death. Wait, what's that? What? That, that, over over there on the, the side of the highway. Looks like a snowmobile. It's a snowmobile. <laughs> We're saved. The snowmobile is running low on gas, but Gil is still making his rounds to save the stranded and stuck residents of Kepler. He's just heading home when he sees something out in the distance. A couple of young kids on a snowmobile and suddenly their headlight disappears. Looks like he has one last stop to make. Dude, that was the second ski you've busted on your snowmobile. At least I didn't get mine buried in an avalanche. Dude, you drive an arctic cat. Total garbage. How are you going to get your snowmobile out from under two feet of snow? Well, there's got to be a shovel in this visitor center. Welcome to the Welcome Depot, your first stop to the world of Kepler County Fair. That's a picture of Klaus Kepler. That guy's a total fraud. He's the guy the town is named after. Didn't you go to the Sesequi... the Sesequi... Uh, the 150 festival? Yeah, I was there. That dude totally stole the town from his brother. How do you steal a town? I'm not kidding. Those kids from the grade school were doing a show and the one kid said it. You're going to trust a little kid to teach you history. You're getting a D in US history right now. I'm getting a C minus. Wow, you're a regular history genius. Name the first three presidents. Oh, easy. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin Detroit Roosevelt. Bam. Franklin Detroit? Yeah, his initials are FDR. The D stands for Detroit. You are dumb! What does it stand for then? Delaney. Delaney? No. I swear on my grandpa's grave. Your grandpa's not dead. The other one, the one that lives in Kansas City, he, he died last summer. Is that why you guys went down there this last summer? Yeah. All right, all right. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin Delaney Roosevelt. I think Lincoln was the third president. Second, third, it doesn't matter. Do you want to call your dad? Nah, he's still angry at me for doing donuts in the church parking lot. Why? You didn't get caught. 
No, but I burnt down the tread on his new tires. Let's just call your dad. Isaac, I don't have my phone. I left it at your house because my dad has that tracker on it. Oh, you idiot. I left my phone at your house because my dad has a tracker on my phone. They think we're at each other's houses. Did you tell your dad that you were staying at my house? No, we have school tomorrow. You don't have school. It's a holiday. What holiday? Valentine's Day. Duh. That's not a holiday. Then why is it on my mom's calendar in red? All of the red ones are holidays. It's a made-up holiday. They're all made-up holidays. Is Halloween on your mom's calendar in red? Yeah. Did we have school on Halloween? Uh, I think so, yeah. You walked around in a Batman mask, idiot. We had school. We went trick-or-treating after that night. I don't think we're going to be able to do that next year. We're getting too old. If our parents think we're staying at each other's houses, no one is coming to look for us. What? That means we're going to be stuck here all night long. We, we can walk back to town. That'll take all night in the snow. You mean we're going to die? We're not going to die. I don't want to die. You're not going to die. I haven't kissed a girl yet. Well, that's no surprise. I haven't been to Disney World yet. Oh, you really need to go. I haven't been to the World Series yet. What? The twins haven't been there in 30 years. Not the twins! I haven't been there as a player! As a what? I don't think that- I'm going to the World Series! Okay, okay, okay. You're going to the World Series. I say we walk. I'd rather try and fail than sit all night here and starve. I don't think you're gonna starve. If you walk, you'll probably pass out in the snow and a plow will run you over and push you into a huge snow pile and we won't find you till the pile melts in April. We need to find a phone. Well, look around. There's one here, behind the desk. Call your dad. Uh, I don't know the number. How do you not know your dad's phone number? It's in my phone as dad. I didn't memorize it. Call your dad. Uh, I can't remember my dad's number either. Oh, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, call 911. The phone is dead. Well, we're stuck. We're gonna die! We're not gonna die. Would you stop saying that? How far is the nearest house? I don't know, a couple of miles. Oh, we're gonna die. Look, we're inside out of the cold. I can see my breath. You have a snowmobile suit on, you'll be fine. Let's just see if we can find a winter survival kit. Why would there be a winter survival kit? The fair is in the summer. Just look around, would you? I'm looking. What's this switch? I don't know. Flip it. Nothing. Flip it again. It's not like we have to warm it up. Maybe there's not electricity to the switch. We turned the lights on when we came in, didn't we? Yeah. So then there's electricity. Let me try it. <laughs> oh, we're gonna die. We're not gonna die. Wait, look outside. All I see is snow. Flip the switch again. Hey. That's the sign for the fair. Yeah? Flip it on and off. Why? Just flip it on and off. Okay. Yeah, keep doing that. You might burn it out. Uh, just keep doing it. Why do you want me to keep doing this? Maybe someone will see it. Good idea. Uh, do you hear that? I just hear the switch flipping. Outside, listen. It's a snowmobile. Yeah. <laughs> We're safe. Just keep flipping the switch. finally headed home. Frozen from head to toe, he spent the whole day in the blizzard and stopped at over 20 houses and cars around Kepler. As he gets back home, Gil notices his driveway is full of snow and he can't even see his car, the drifts are so high. Luckily, he does notice the fireplace is roaring and can already smell Helen's chicken piccata in the oven. just calling to see if you were well, home. Well, where else would I be? No one is left out in Kepler. I've been down every street, through every ditch. I've been out to Lake Killebrew, over to the fairgrounds, and by the municipal liquor I store. I know. I've been over by the... How do you know? People have called. Who called? The new teacher over at the high school. Principal. 
the father of one of the boys out at the fairgrounds. Why did he call? Oh, he wanted to thank you. Well, those boys broke their snowmobile doing donuts in the fairground parking lot. Pastor Donna called. I think she was drunk. Gordo called to see if you made it home. I didn't pick him up. He saw you from his window. Oh. I've got a surprise for you. I'm almost out of gas and I don't have any in the garage. It's not that. I'll do another round of shoveling tomorrow morning. You don't need to go out and shovel. I told you that I'll put that shelf up for you in the kitchen as soon as I get the right screws. Gilbert Schneider, would you stop talking for one minute and listen? What? I moved the books out of the garage. You what? I moved my Kepler book out of the garage. You can park your car in there again. Well, I uh, don't want to clean it off right now. You don't have to clean it off. You can put it in there tomorrow. Well, thank you, Helen. You deserve to get in a warm car in the morning. Thank you. I figured you've helped all these people in Kepler. The least I can do is help you. I appreciate that. Take your boots off and get out of that snowsuit, and I'll get you a nice warm cup of hot chocolate. Put some whipped cream on it. I have made you hot chocolate for 30 years, and in all that time have I ever forgotten to put whipped cream on your hot chocolate. (sighs) Lots of times. What was that? Nothing, Helen. I was just having a bit of trouble getting my boots off. I've been saying that you should get some new boots for two years now. Your feet have flattened as you've gotten older. These boots are fine. You can order boots online now and have them delivered right to the house. I don't need new boots. Brought you a spoon so you can eat the whipped cream. Thank you. I'll make you an appointment with the foot doctor. I don't need to go to the foot doctor. Oh, I doubt there's a foot doctor in Wapton. We'll probably have to go to Fargo. I don't need to go to a foot doctor. Of course you do. You're having trouble with your boots. I probably won't be able to get you in until the end of the week. You know, I don't think they'll have this snow cleaned up until then. Did you hear that even the highway patrolmen were getting stuck in the ditch? I know. I help them. Who helps the helpers when the helpers need help? (laughs) Some good Samaritan, I guess. How's the hot chocolate? Good. Can I have some more whipped cream? I'm saving it. There's only a few squirts left. You can buy some more. Let me have what's left. Gilbert Schneider, you're going to be out in the snow for hours tomorrow cleaning up the driveway. I want you to have it tomorrow when you come in. You can get some more. I am not going to be able to go shopping for at least a week. We can stop off at the fancy grocery store when we go up to Fargo for your foot doctor. How many times do I have to tell you, Helen, I don't need to go to the foot of doctor? Of course you do. Your feet are flat as pancakes. If you can't get all of the books into our garbage, I'll take the rest over to City Hall and you can throw them in the dumpster. Oh, I didn't throw them in the garbage. Then what are you going to do with them? I'm going to sell them. Helen, I told you, no one is going to buy a history book that is wrong. They are collector's items. Where did you put them? I put them in the back room. In my office? That's hardly an office. I used the desk back there to pay the bills. You won't be able to get to the desk now. The books are in front of it. Helen, I use that as my office. Well, you'll just have to use somewhere else as an office. Where? I don't know. Oh, the breakfast nook in the kitchen. That table is covered with your crocheting. I can move it to the side, give you a little space. Helen, I need my office. Gilbert Schneider, I did you a favor and gave you a spot in the garage to park your car. Now, the least you can do is be grateful. Now, give me that mug and I'll get you a refill. Put some whipped cream on it. I'm saving the whipped cream for tomorrow. I'm going to buy my own whipped cream and hide it in the garage. was a special KFGO presentation of the radio play The Kepler Valentine's Day Blizzard by Kevin Kennedy based on a story by Kevin Kennedy and J.J. Gordon. The home for all of the Kepler radio plays is the It Takes Two podcast network. You can find that at kfgo.com. This radio play has been brought to you by Mindak Market, your regional chocolate headquarters.